If you were a farmer, you should consider nutrient trading for the simple fact that it's a good, positive thing to do. I think farmers will become interested. I think they'll, it, it, they'll work it into their toolbox of things along with cost share. These are actually new revenue sources that weren't around 10 years ago. This would give farmers just that opportunity maybe to, to increase their bottom line, increase profitability while, you know, um, sustaining agriculture. Hello, I'm Pat Langenfelder and I'm president of Maryland Farm Bureau. My family and I own and operate Grandview Farm here in Kent County, where we grow corn, soybeans, wheat, and barley, and we also have a swine operation. And I'm here to tell you about a new and exciting program at MDA called the Nutrient Trading Program. It is totally voluntary. It can bring new revenue sources to our farms and it also will be helping us to enhance the water quality in the Chesapeake Bay. This can be a win-win situation. On one hand, we're helping to improve water quality in the Bay, and on the other hand, we are helping to continue a viable ag industry in Maryland. The Chesapeake Bay is the largest estuary in the United States, and its watershed covers more than 64,000 square miles and encompasses parts of six states, including almost all of Maryland and the District of Columbia. The Bay is a vital economic, cultural, and ecological resource for Maryland and the nation as a whole, and in 2009, it was designated a national treasure. But the Bay has not been healthy for a long time. Excess nutrients and sediment have degraded the water quality, not only of the bay, but also the hundreds of tributaries and streams that feed it. These nutrients come from many sources, wastewater treatment plants, lawns, parking lots, rooftops, farms, and the air. Everyone in the watershed plays a part in the bay's pollution, and likewise, everyone must play a role in restoring it to health. Since the original Chesapeake Bay Agreement was signed almost 30 years ago, Marylanders have made significant changes that reduce the amounts of nitrogen and phosphorus entering the bay. But the job is far from done, and even more reductions must be made if the bay is to recover. Nutrient trading is one of a number of approaches to lowering the nutrient levels in the bay. Like most water quality solutions, the goal of nutrient trading is to improve the health of the Chesapeake by reducing the excess nutrients leaving our cities, factories, and farms. Three elements set nutrient trading apart. First, it is completely voluntary. Second, it is a source of revenue for those who can make further reductions in nutrients through plant conservation practices. And third, it offers a cost-effective alternative for meeting environmental regulations. If we think of this community as the state of Maryland, then the blue bar on the left represents the amount of nutrients that we collectively release into the Chesapeake Bay. While the bay needs some level of nutrients to be healthy, currently those levels are too high for the bay to thrive. The green line is the level of nutrients we must get back to for the bay to recover. It's a tall order, but if all sectors work together, from farms to homes to factories, we will lower nutrients to a level that allows the Chesapeake Bay to flourish. Under Maryland's nutrient trading program, when a participating farmer or landowner adopts a conservation practice that reduces nutrient loads below the designated baseline, tradable credits are generated that can be certified by the Maryland Department of Agriculture. As new growth takes place and nutrient levels rise, these credits can be sold to other parties that find it economical to offset some of this new growth by paying farmers to implement conservation practices. This approach maintains a safe level of nutrients entering the bay while producing profits for the seller and cost savings for the buyer. Nutrient trading creates an ongoing supply of renewable credits that can help to achieve water quality and other natural resource goals for the Chesapeake Bay. To get started, an interested farmer will likely contact a trusted advisor such as a soil conservation district office or crop consultant. Together,
They will assess his land and determine how his current nutrient load and existing conservation practices compare to the baseline for his segment of the watershed. In this example, the farmer uses the Maryland Trading Program's online calculation tool. First, he enters information for the current year's crop. Then, he enters the two conservation practices that he has already adopted. These reductions bring him to the baseline of 8 pounds per acre. Anything he can reduce below this level could generate credits. He then chooses cover crops and a water control structure, new conservation practices he has been considering, and learns that he could reduce his nutrient load by a total of 8 pounds of nitrogen per acre below the baseline. Once the Department of Agriculture has reviewed his calculations and approved the credits, he can bring them to the nutrient trading market to sell to an interested buyer. Like other free markets, farmers will have several ways to sell their credits. Credits can be sold directly to a buyer, or more likely, they will be sold through a third party. Often, such a broker or aggregator will work with a number of farms and manage the transaction with one or more buyers. These alternatives allow the farmer to participate in a way that makes the most sense for his or her operation. To most farmers, the process will feel similar to working with conservation cost share programs. However, nutrient trading offers the farmer the potential to sell at a price that not only pays implementation costs, but also ensures a profit. And remember, participation is voluntary. You do the math you make the choice. I'm Allison Howard. I work for the Queen Anne's County Soil Conservation in Centerville, Maryland, and my husband and I also own and operate an organic vegetable and grain farm in northern Queen Anne's County. Each conservation practice has a, a researched level of nutrient reduction that it can meet. At the Soil Conservation District, that's part of what we do these days is to help farmers negotiate the whole trading tool. And it's fairly straightforward. It takes a half an hour to 45 minutes of time. You can insert the benchmark, the existing conditions into the computer, and then you can play with a lot of different scenarios on the planned part to see what's going to be easiest to install, what's the most cost effective, and then you balance that with how many credits you're going to trade. You can run a new scenario and say, oh, that'll generate 50 credits. Well, if I do this, it's only gonna generate 25. So you can weigh out all of the different options to see what new practice is going to give you the most bang for your buck. Hi, my name is Buddy Hans. I'm a farmer and secretary of the Maryland Department of Agriculture. Maryland farmers have a long history of conservation practices on their farms. Given the resources, they have shown that they will step up and do everything necessary on their farms to protect water quality. The Nutrient Trading Program is another tool that we can provide our farmers that we believe holds great promise. When I first saw this, you know, I thought um, of all these opportunities because it has, you know, the income potential. You know, it certainly has the sustainability and, you know, installing best management practice. These are things that farmers already do now. Hi, I'm Chip Bowling. I'm a farmer from Charles County, Maryland. I'm currently president of Maryland Grain Producers, and we grow uh, corn, soybeans, barley, and wheat. Farmers are a type of group where they, they like to listen before they come out with an opinion, and I think it's up to people like Maryland Grain Producers, Farm Bureau, uh, and Maryland Soybean Association. I think it's up to us to get the facts for farmers so that they can make an educated decision. I really like a market-based approach uh, to environmental solutions rather than just a regulatory approach. If farmers can be compensated for the investments that they make in best management practices, I think it's a win-win for everybody. Uh, we get the BMP installed, the farmer's compensated for what he does, and, and everybody wins in that scenario. Farmers particularly know that we don't need to make a choice between clean water and a viable agriculture, that we can have both and we insist on both. Nutrient trading is a new program that I believe is well worth looking into. I encourage any farmer interested in learning more about this program to contact their local soil conservation district office so that they have all the information they need to make the right decision for their operation.